A covalent bond involves elements sharing electrons, but no one said they had to share electrons fairly. In this lesson, we will quantify the greediness of each element and see how that affects the electron distribution in the covalent bond. When one element is much greedier than the other, they form a polar covalent bond. Recall from section 8.3 that atoms are held together by a covalent bond in the same way that two dogs are held together by a toy that they both want. This section will imagine what happens when the two dogs are not evenly matched and one dog is capable of holding onto the toy with much greater strength than the other. Chemists invented the term electronegativity to quantify how greedy each atom is. Elements with high electronegativities will hold onto electrons tighter and pull those electrons closer to their nucleus. The most electronegative atoms are in the upper right corner of the periodic table. The greediest of all elements is fluorine. When elements with the same electronegativity share atoms, they share the atoms evenly, and this is called a nonpolar covalent bond. The electrons in a nonpolar covalent bond are distributed evenly around both atoms in the bond, such as is demonstrated here for H2 and F2. But when two elements with largely different electronegativities form a covalent bond, the more electronegative atom will pull the electron density closer to its nucleus. With more electron density around that atom, it gains a partial negative charge, while the other atom gets a partial positive charge. This is called a polar covalent bond. We have a few ways of indicating a polar covalent bond, as I will show on this molecule of hydrogen fluoride. We use the lowercase Greek letter delta, along with a plus or minus superscript, to indicate which atom has a partial positive or a partial negative charge. Notice that the greedy electronegative atom always has the partial negative charge. We also draw something called a dipole arrow, which has a plus near the positive end of the molecule and an arrow pointing toward the electronegative atom. I like to think the arrow signifies the direction that the electrons flow. The difference in electronegativity between two elements determines how polar the bond between those elements are. In reality, bond polarity is a spectrum from fully equal sharing between atoms with the same electronegativity to complete electron transfer between elements with drastically different electronegativities. But humans have a desire to categorize every natural phenomenon we encounter. So we made the following arbitrary cutoffs. If the difference in electronegativity is less than 0.4, we consider the bond to be nonpolar covalent. If the difference in electronegativity is greater than 0.4, we consider that bond to be a polar covalent bond. One atom will have a partial positive charge and one atom will have a partial negative charge. The dipole arrow points toward the atom with the partial negative charge. If the difference in electronegativity is greater than 1.7, we consider that an ionic bond. This large difference in electronegativity is usually only seen when a metal and a non-metal atom bonds together, which is why ionic compounds are composed of a metal cation and a non-metal anion. However, even bonds we would consider extremely ionic, such as the ionic bond between lithium and fluorine, have a small amount of electron overlap, meaning there's no such thing as a purely ionic bond. This figure visualizes the range of electron distributions when bonds are formed between the period three elements. We see that the amount of electron overlap increases as the difference in electronegativity decreases. The most ionic substance on this slide is sodium chloride, in the most covalent substance on this slide is Cl2. This slide shows the physical properties of the series of period three elements shown on the last slide. The combinations with the largest electronegativity differences displayed on the left 
show the most ionic characteristics, such as a very high melting point and high conductivity as a liquid. As we shift right and the electronegativity difference decreases, melting point lowers and the substances become liquid and eventually gaseous. Thus, they lose their ionic characteristics and behave more like covalent compounds.